Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again today, all the way in from the Czech Republic. We are going to be taking a look at the Tosca 2 from R&H Knives. We're going to be looking at a full custom knife today. Not production, not mid-tech, but a full custom knife. Starting here with the certificate of authenticity that will be coming with the packaging. This is going to list here the model name, the construction, blade material, what you're going to be getting uh, made into the handle, and uh, if it's going to be numbered, here is the numbering, and then Jan's signature, and the date of the, uh, the making of the knife. Always nice to see that. Now, as I showed you in the sneak peek the other day, this is the packaging that you're going to be receiving. Simple plain white box with a little pull open tab. Get that open. Get this bad boy open here. And voila, inside is truly a thing of beauty. And it looks even more beautiful when you turn all of your studio lights on. There we go. Now, before we get into that, let me show you what else is in the packaging. So there is Jan's card. Let me get a quick focus on that. You can pause that if you'd like. And then you can contact Jan for your own build. And then inside of here is going to be your custom made pivot tool because it is a custom pivot. Ah, there we go. So I thought that was a nice little inclusion into your packaging. Put that in there and then we shall get rid of the box. And here is that gorgeous, gorgeous thing of beauty. Now, as I mentioned in the sneak peek that I uploaded the other day, this is, in my opinion, a, a rather exceptional knife because it's unique. It's different in the way that it's been designed. It's different in the way that it's been finished as well. You just don't see a lot of black DLC out there in the custom knife world. As a matter of fact, when you really think about it, there are only a few true black DLC finishes out there made available. And I know we hear black DLC a lot. What you're actually getting in most cases, because you'll see them as, in, in, in knives as cheap as 150 bucks, like with zero tolerance and stuff like that. What you're actually getting is a PVD coated knife and PVD is just the application process. And I don't want you to get confused between DLC and PVD. DLC is still applied with the PVD process. But what you're typically getting is a PVD coated knife with a black oxide. This is actual DLC, diamond like carbon coating. And what that means is it's going to be a more scratch resistant, harder coating. That carbon coating is actually going to be more scratch resistant than uh, the steel that's underneath. And one of the easiest ways to tell if you've got actual DLC versus a, uh, a just a standard crappy coating, I don't want to say crappy coating, but a standard coating, is the fact is a DLC will replicate the finish of the steel beneath it. It's also a very, 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 very thin in 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 uh, in its its coating. So, if the finish is a matte finish, your DLC will be matte. If your finish of your steel is a hand rub satin, the DLC will be a satin finish. If the steel is a mirror polish, your DLC will be mirror polish. That's why you get a black mirror. If it's a black oxide PVD, which everybody is passing off as DLC, it's just going to be matte black, like it was Cerakoted or something. It's just black. That's it. There's no sheen to it. There's no finish to it. It's just black. So when we talk about DLC, like see there on the pocket clip, it's replicating the fish finish underneath. So with that out of the way, let me lay this down very quickly and we're going to go over the specs of the knife. I'll give you some size comparisons. We'll weigh it up and then we're going to talk about the maker. We'll talk about the knife and why I think this is something that you really, really, really want to have in your collection. So spoiler alert, I really, really like it a hell of a lot and I find it to be a great value. So let's start there. This is the Tasca 2 point, I'm sorry, this is the Tasca 2 Variant 2. And what I mean by that is, 
If you search around on YouTube right now and you look for r &H Knives Tasca 2, T-A-S-C-A, what you will see doesn't look like this. What you will see will be a standard carbon fiber over titanium liners, and that's it. This is the only one on YouTube right now at the time of uploading this video where you will see the titanium frame as a border around the carbon fiber, meaning this is a full titanium frame on each side that has been milled out with a large pocket and the carbon fiber laid into that pocket so there is a titanium border around it. It's a new way of him uh, building this knife. I love this look, and that is the newest variant of this model. So that is why uh, I'm calling it the V2 of the Tasca 2. Um, this is made by Jan Samek in the Czech Republic. These are a 50-50 CNC and handmade custom. So what he's doing is he's cutting everything with CNC, He's doing all of this, these pockets and channels and chamfers and all these things with CNC. He's going back by hand and cleaning everything up, doing all the final contouring by hand. Uh, he may be, and I do believe he is doing the initial grinds with CNC. And then he's going back over, very obviously, because you can see that, uh, going back over the bevels by hand. Everything is cleaned up by hand. Everything is then hand-fitted. Obviously, the locks, the detents, all that is uh, all hand-tuned and hand-fitted. He's doing an extraordinary polish on this dark matter red carbon fiber by Fat Carbon. It's a very high luster polish that he's applying to that carbon fiber. And it looks extraordinary. I mean, that is just gorgeous. I can't get over how absolutely beautiful that is. And for some reason, my camera is not focusing. Give me one second here. Let me clean off my lenses real quick and see if it's going to focus any damn better. Hold on. Okay, we're going to see if that made any difference whatsoever. There we go. Now we can actually see what the hell it is I'm talking about. Beautiful finish work on that carbon fiber. Nice high luster. Really, really beautifully done. So you can see all the handwork that's been done. You obviously see, look at the pockets inside, all of the CNC work that's been done. So you're paying for a skill level on both areas, on his machining, on his... Uh, his uh, CAD work, his CAM work, his hand work, his knife making skill, everything, you're paying for all that. But you're not paying a hell of a lot of money because his prices on these are around 600 US, which is, in my opinion, wildly underpriced. $600 and you're getting a full custom. Again, this is not a production knife. It is not a mid-tech knife. It is one guy doing all this work based on what you're ordering. Now, you can order a spec knife, which means he'll have a certain layout of options or a certain knife available on his website that you can choose from. It'll either be, I have these knives that are done, ready, available, you can choose from them and buy them, or you can order a knife and here are the ready-made available options in these different carbon fibers, these different finishes of blade, here you go. Or you can say, I really want an all textured titanium uh, inlay on my frame and I want a bead blasted uh, blade and then I want a Timascus backspacer. Then that would be a full custom and then your price would determine, you know, the material, the you know, materials and workmanship would determine your price from there. But those are the ways that you can order from him. But he's only making about 80 knives per year in his shop. Because again, full custom. Everything is done at a slower rate. So it's limited availability. Right now, his books are open. That's one of the most exciting things that I can do is bring out to you a really talented maker making a, an exceptional knife who's actually available to take orders. 
I love this. Absolutely love it. Now, this knife has undergone some generational changes to make it more lightweight. Each time that he's upgraded this knife since the first time he made it, he's made it more lightweight and he's contoured more of it and he's softened more of the edges to make it more comfortable in the hand. He's softened more areas of the pocket clip so that it doesn't tear up the pocket to make it go in and out of the pocket more easily to not snag on things. Basically, everything is about comfort and practicality along with making it more lightweight. So your specs are as follows, very simply. And again, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and move the knife over here because I'm going to list the specifications right over here like I started doing on my last video. I'm going to start doing that from now on. Your overall length is 8.07 inches, which is 205 millimeters. Your blade length is 3.5 inches or 90 millimeters in length in M390. Again, you will be able to order a different steel if you would prefer. He was doing these in RWL 34 in the previous variation. Oh, I would have loved RWL 34. It's one of my favorite steels ever. Blade thickness is 125 thousandths thick. Good thickness, not too thick, not too thin. Great EDC thickness, in my opinion, which is 3.2 millimeters. And the weight. What is the weight? It's a mystery. Actually, it's not because I weighed it in the uh, sneak peek video that I did for you. But here you go. For those that didn't see that. 3.4 ounces. 3.4 ounces. Oh my goodness. He's using custom made bearings that he makes in house. So it's his bearings and his own uh, cages that he's making the cages against steel washers to make the system as smooth as humanly possible. Let's give you some size comparisons against some other knives that you've seen me review in the past. Some of my favorites. Here it is up against the Tuya Knives Hive 2. As you see, it's a little tiny bit smaller. Considerably lighter in weight. Well, let's, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to talk about it, I might as well show you. So, again, 3.4 ounces. 5.3. That's the difference between pocketing out all of your titanium. Another size comparison here to my Dan Carraher 904, one of my absolute favorite knives ever. Significantly larger. Five ounces. And this is significantly smaller. Big difference there. Against my Varga Knives VBR. Nearly identical in size. But you see this is much, much sleeker. Woo! 5.3 ounces. Huge weight difference. And then you guys know I love my Terrain 365. Almost identical in size. This one is... Uh, Quite a bit slimmer in its blade stock. And almost identical in its weight. And this is uh, very, very thin on the titanium with a lot of G10. So you've got, as I mentioned with the Terrain 365, a perfect EDC weight. Now Jan began making his knives back in uh, 2014 with his father, Richard. And that's where the brand name comes from, in case you're wondering. And we all love to know origins of, of the names and stuff like that. It, it's named for he and his father, uh, R for Richard, and H for Hansa, which is, as I'm being told by Jan, the same as Jan in the Czech Republic. I don't know how that works. Maybe it's like the whole uh, John and Jack thing here in the U.S. I, I, I don't even know how that works. That You could be named John, but you'll, you could be called Jack. I, I don't know how that works, but hey, whatever. Um, and it's like a lot of different knife makers, uh, he began his knife making career making fixed blades. Uh, he had a personal fascination with folders, and that led him to start making his own designs. And I got to tell you, from making the leap immediately 
from fixed blades to folders with the original Tasca. The original Tasca looked really good. It was nice. I didn't see that one when it when it when it first debuted, but I saw the original version of the Tasca two, which was about I want to say right before the uh, the virus of of unknown origin hit. Uh, and I saw that, and I, I remember going, wow, that's really, really, really cool. And I had kind of forgotten about it. And then it was when I had seen uh, my buddy in Switzerland, Seven Ready Knife Reviews, and I suggest that you go check out his channel and subscribe. When I saw him review the previous generation of the uh, Tasca 2, I was reminded, and I went, oh, yes, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I reached out to Jan, and it was funny because Jan is like, he goes, oh my God, he goes, I'm so glad you reached out to me. He goes, he goes, great minds think alike. I really want you to review one of my knives. I love your channel. I guess I think it'd be really great uh, to hear your opinion on the work that I've been doing. I'm like, super, let's, uh, let's figure something out. He's like, what do you want? Let's, let's figure out a custom configuration. Um, just tell me what you like, and here's the materials I'm working with currently, but if you want anything different... You know, sky's the limit, figure out what you want and I'll work with it. And I said, you know what? I just got finished making uh, two or three knives with the Fat Carbon uh, Dark Matter Red. So I'm glad to see that you're working with it too. Um, I really fell in love with it. So let's, let's try that. And I fell in love with it when I was working with it. I love the really dark nature of it. I love the fact that the color, and it's random. You could get some that has a lot of red in it or some that just has a little, but it's pretty subtle. And I said, let's uh, let's do that. And, and let's definitely do the black DLC. I love that rich look. And he nailed it. Now, the thing that I love the most about this knife, besides the ergos, let's talk about that first. I really like how this fits in the hand. It's super comfortable. I, I wasn't sure that I'd like the way that it tapers toward the rear. I thought it was going to be too slick and want to kind of push out of my hand, but it really doesn't. It fits my hand really, really well. The jimping up here, while it's not sharp at all, it, it feels good. I don't really think that it's doing a lot for retention, but it feels pretty good. And there's some um, little, little bit of jimping in the gear style backspacer. And I think that the fattier hand kind of locks into it, and it feels good. I don't think I'm ever going to have any issues with it. Um, I've carried it almost every day since it arrived, and I've really, really been enjoying it. It is so lightweight. I can't even describe to you the fact that a knife this large and this thick virtually disappears in my pocket, and I don't even realize it's there. But my favorite feature is the flipper tab. The fact that it's so discreet, it almost completely disappears into the design. It's completely uninterrupted to the flow of the design. You don't realize it's there, just like the lanyard opening in the backspacer. It's, all, it's like you don't even realize it's there. Yet, it works perfectly. You can either rest your finger on this well-placed notch and slide it back, or just hit the tab. And it rockets open. The action is smooth as glass. As a matter of fact, I've nicked my thumbnail more than once because it wants to just drop on its own so freely. His use of the bearings against the steel washers makes it just perfectly glass smooth. Even though the blade does not weigh a lot, it just wants to drop so freely. And by the way, that, that it, there's no looseness at all. When I unlock that lock, I cannot move that blade in any direction or, or sideways at all. Uh, there is no looseness to that pivot whatsoever. So it's not that. It's that damn smooth. And speaking of pivot, there's another look at that custom pivot. Just handsome and clean. Nothing crazy, but it's a nice, simple design that goes along with that nice, simple design of the overall knife. So if you look at the titanium going around the perimeter, that is not DLC. That is just a dark stone wash. Nicely beveled all the way around. So you've got a dark stone wash on all the titanium going all the way around, which is a nice contrast to the dark black of the carbon fiber and to the dark black of the DLC blade. Now, if there was anything I would want to change about this, 
the blade finish, while it's still a nice high luster blade, it's not the same premium uh, polish that you would get on a $2,000 plus Rockstead or a $1,500 plus Marfion Custom. Now, again, notice the huge price difference between a $600 RH and a $1,500 plus Marfion and a $2,000 plus Rockstead. There is a marked difference there. Uh, honestly, you can get into a, a mirror polished Rockstead folder uh, starting around $1,150. So let, let's, let's be honest and fair here. But there's still a remarkable difference. And the difference there is uh, what it looks like he's doing is he's stopping around 1,200 or 1,500 grit and then buffing and then doing the DLC finish. Uh, whereas what he could be doing is going to like a uh, one micron or half micron, like 15,000 grit, then uh, a multi-compound buffing to get a true mirror and then doing the, uh, the DLC. But what that would do because of the days of hand finishing and then polishing that that would require, you'd be just about doubling the price. So you have to balance out the fact that you're getting a polished blade at $600. If you want a polished blade and you're okay with spending, say, $1,200, then maybe, yes, he could put another eight hours or 10 hours into sitting down with uh, die maker stones and polishing out that blade and then going back over every time you go with the die maker stone in one grit, you go back over it with sandpaper then stone, then paper, then stone, then paper, then stone, then paper, through each and every grit, all the way up till you get to somewhere around, you know, 15,000 grit. And then you go through a couple of different compounds on your buffer. And then after that, you're paying this extraordinary cost for the DLC coating. And then what you have is a $1,500 plus knife. But at $600, I am absolutely more than okay with the finish that's on that blade. It looks great. Here's the other thing too. And you can ask anybody, look at anybody in any knife group that uh, posts a picture of their Rockstead. Ask them how often they're using it for cutting tasks. There is nothing that feels better than cutting with a Rockstead because of that very unique edge that they have. They're going to tell you they're afraid to because they don't want to, they don't want to screw up that amazing finish, that gorgeous finish. Well, here's one that I, and I already have cut with it. I don't mind cutting with it. It just, it doesn't bother me. I'll clean this off just for the sake of video purposes, but um, it, it's, it's not going to scare me as much as a mirror polished blade. It's just not. I've got a nice high luster, so it's got a dressier look to it. It's going to set itself apart from every other knife in my collection. But I'm not afraid to use it. And look, just look how sleek and sexy this is. Another thing I wanted to mention was the way that he profiled this blade. Instead of just having a normal belly here, he's got a straight edge meeting another nearly straight edge. But they come to a point right here. And what that's going to allow you to do is, so you can still do a rocking cut if you need to, but how many times have you gone to open like a package and you're, you're, you're kind of zipping down the tape or you're zipping down a piece of cardboard? And if you've got just a belly where it's just rounded, there's a difference when you like switch to maybe, I don't have a Tantos. Yeah, I do have a Tantos sitting out here, don't I? A lot of times what we'll do is we'll want to use the, the corner of that, that tanto edge there where the two edges meet because there's a, there's a nice little corner there that's really great for cutting. Well, you actually get that right there. Oops, didn't mean to hit the camera there. So you've got that right there. There's a nice little corner right there that you don't get in a traditional uh, rounded edge like that. So I found that to be quite useful actually last week when I was uh, I was cutting a few boxes down. Anyway, it's just not particularly important, but it was just one thing that I noticed uh, when I was cutting some stuff. There's that, that little corner right there, just a little bit different, just a, a unique way that he's profiled this blade that I didn't expect when I had seen the, uh, the pictures of it. 
Anyway, the action is addictive. I love sitting here just flipping it. Light switching this thing is... It's nearly orgasmic feeling the way that this flips. I really, really enjoy this knife a lot. And I think, I don't know if you, yeah, I guess you can reverse flick it if you want to. I think everybody that gets this is just going to fall madly in love with it. I like the dark nature of it. You don't need to get the DLC. He does satin blades or polished blades. that doesn't have the DLC. You don't have to go dark if you don't want to. You don't have to go with the dark matter carbon fiber. There's a lot of choices. I mean, man, you could go with a nice satin blade and a bright orange G10 if you want to. I mean, there's, the sky's the limit. Um, I just liked the look of this dark and sinister finish all the way around. And it stands out in my collection. It's something that when I go to open my, my knife boxes, and if I don't have a particular idea in my head of what I want to carry that day, this jumps out as something completely different. It's not battling anything else in my collection. And I really, really enjoy that. Um, I look forward to seeing new models from him in the future. I am a huge fan of everything that he's done on this. The quality, the fitment of all the components, the finish work that he's done, the way this feels in the hand, the contouring, everything that he's done here. This is an extraordinary, extraordinarily talented knife maker. Um, and I hope to own more knives from him in the future. Go give him a follow on Instagram. Order a knife from him uh, if you have the budget. If you're looking for a unique custom from somebody that, you know, your friends don't already have three or four of his knives in their collection, you want to stand out and be different. You want to own something from a maker that not a lot of people are into yet, but he's going to explode. This is the time to do it and do it before every knife he makes is $1,000 plus. I, w I would definitely say jump on this and do it now. I can't find a flaw in here that makes me say that you should have any trepidation whatsoever. Everything about the way he's making this is just amazing. So there you have it, guys. There's my thoughts. That's what I think. And I'll see you guys on the next video.